Hello, greetings, and salutations. I'm Jason Carl from White Wolf, and this is Seattle by Night, our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle. Yes, fangs all around. Let's meet the fangs. Indeed. Who are they? Well, uh, it pleases me to be the first. Uh, right here, you're looking at Jameson Keen. Uh, too moist, I would say. Mm. Uh, thoroughly damp. Um, unpleasantly so. Uh, <laughs> a uh, Nosferatu who isn't quite, uh, doesn't quite understand that that's what he is. He thinks that he is, in fact, uh, quite cool. And uh, he just installed TikTok. So hmm. get ready for those memes. Oh, shit. Well, yeah, they're on the way. Good Damn. for him. Uh, hi, I'm playing a Amanda. Uh, and uh, I feel like she is the eternal student uh, whose dad just is blowing up her spot right now. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, mm. Rough stuff. She's, she's in a bad food. place right now, but yeah. It's always embarrassing when your dad shows up to a party. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's that's yeah. exactly how it feels for her. Oh, and I'm Dora. <laughs> in real my, life? <laughs> in real life, I'm Dora. But right now, I'm playing Amanda. That's right. Hello. Hi. I'm Jasmine, that bronze girl, Bueller. And um, I'm very thrilled to be number three. So It's got to feel good. Yeah, it's pretty great. Pretty <laughs> awesome. Feels great. Um, Who are you playing? I'm playing Betty. She is a bootlegger turned businesswoman. Um, she's La Sombra, but she's kind of, feels like maybe she's gotten soft because she's been a vampire for so long. Mm. She's, that what she's been around you, for you a minute. Soft? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what happens when you become a vampire. <laughs> mm-hmm. You become you soft. You just slowly yeah. become, not like, you don't actually, see, yeah. you think you, you get more powerful and more animal-like, it's the opposite. Is it? Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, have, I have been running this game all you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you become more adorable. For like exactly. 20 years. <laughs> Yeah, that's me. Uh, hello, in real life I'm Mike Krahulik. But today I'm playing Tom Hollandaise, who's 10 pounds of vampire in a five pound bag. That's I would accept good. that as an axiom. It's very good. <laughs> I think that breaks it. I mean, yeah, I think that yeah, like, I his think character that's, right I mean, up. <clears throat> vampirism is generally thought of as a kind of sack. Yeah, I think we all agree. Yeah, I think a container that. of some kind. Yeah, exactly. A that vessel. is, you're like ready to burst. He's ready to pop off at any moment. Okay. Yeah, with yeah. vampire. Oh, good. Yeah. Get vamped. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> get, get vamped. Is that like our slogan? No, I, I don't. Get I don't. Author, I don't authorize this. <laughs> We're gonna have a Good, slogan. I don't like it. We're gonna have a slogan, but we haven't gotten to it yet. We haven't, okay, got, we'll we haven't there. gotten there yet. No. I'm sure we will. No. Brief recap then. When last we left our fanged protagonists, they were enjoying the hospitality of the local Camarilla kindred at a place they called Elysium, kind of neutral ground for all vampires of any faction or belief. <laughs> And this Elysium was taking place at the Tacoma Museum of Glass down on the waterfront, on, on the Theophos Waterway, as a matter of fact. A building full of incredible, although fragile, works of art, mm-hmm. and also filled with other vampires. And you met some very interesting individuals. Individuals like Evangeline of Clan Toreador, Tom's clan. Right? Yes. Yeah. You met Kennedy, the Tremere Keeper of Elysium. Uh, you met Valentine, the Malkavian, who had some prophetic words yeah. for Mr. Keene. Some Shakespearean mm. uh, allegories there. A little, a little bardic mm-hmm. warning, mm-hmm. right? Some divination. Uh, Mr. Keene also met Sergei, the tusked Nosferatu. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, that guy's great. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's wonderful. Yeah. I just want to watch those two again. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, listen, I'm hoping that you have the opportunity. Because like I said before, we're talking about a lifelong camp-tier friendship. Friendship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Only good things could possibly come of this association. Oh, no. Right? Oh, no. You're going to be crying in the comic yeah. this time. No, we, 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 the dog is going to die, I think is what Did you read our so. comic strip? Yeah. <laughs> it always surprises me. Well, yeah, it's so funny. I think you're just like putting them out there and then yeah. I'm like, oh, you saw that? <laughs> no, it's like we just put them in the bottle and then just like throw them into the yeah, ocean. It's like sting. A- another, yeah, exactly. Another person saw it. I hope somebody reads this. Is that yeah. really? Okay. Basically, yeah. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? I appreciate that. Yeah. 
You also met um, Odette, your friend. Actually, you re-met her, the, the uh, Bruja Hound, okay. who mm-hmm. works for the as yet unrevealed sheriff. Mm-hmm. She was had her hands full dealing with the visiting Anarchs who were right living up to their name. Mm-hmm. 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 Right. You have probationary status in the Camberla. You've been enjoying it. Yeah, it's been a interesting evening, but it is drawing to a close. Someone, probably um, an assistant, maybe a, a minion, flicks the lights on and off a couple of times oh, classic. to get it's everybody's classic. attention. And slowly, the kindred, including those that you're talking to, begin to drift towards the center of the atrium. And they are gathering around that rather uh, good-looking, besuited vampire, whom someone pointed out as Mr. Kendrick mm-hmm. earlier in the evening. Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Mr. Lamar. <laughs> Is he going to drop the hottest mixtape right here? Wow. In the of the <laughs> I, heard it was, I heard it was coming. He looks like he's getting ready to say something. I, I allow it. You're going to let it happen? <laughs> going to let it all transpire. Oh, I do man. not interrupt. <laughs> no, I'll, 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 I'll join my hands. It's like we have, we have to communicate even the things we're not doing. Yeah. It's like the mm. notes they're not playing. I'll just join both of my hands uh, on my cane. On your cane. Sergey will stand next to you. <gasps> Evangeline, or Evangeline, depending on your preference, will loop her arm to yours and mm-hmm. guide you toward the waiting small group of vampires. Okay. This is important. Kendrick wants to be Prince. Oh, oh who doesn't? <laughs> well, me for one. <laughs> Princess, maybe? Hmm. <laughs> now, that has a nice ring to it. There you go. Consider right? It. Princess Evangeline. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Booker gives you a meaningful look from across the atrium. Uh, an unspoken invitation to be next to him while this goes down. Uh, I choose not to. I also... Um, choose not to. I, yeah, choose not to. And Amanda also uh, looks like a wreck. Like, she's been holding back tears, but the, it's not working. So, like, her mascara has started to run. So, the, she's just the blood like, tears have yeah, begun she's blood tears. to drip down her face. <laughs> Haunted yeah. She's shit. been, like, wiping them away as much as she can, but, like... But it's obvious. It's conspicuous. To, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She just, like, snubs her dad a little All bit. All the other kindred clearly notice... But they don't say anything to you about it. Ooh. I hand you my handkerchief. Hmm. You dab at your face and mm-hmm. take some of the blood away. That mascara is shot, though. Yeah, oh, yes. Totally I wrong. look awful. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody keep an eye on TMZ tomorrow. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kendrick smiles, welcomes everyone. Thanks, everyone, for joining the Kindred this evening, especially our newcomers. I just got a really bad feeling. Please continue. Mm. He indicates each of you in turn. Mr. Hollandaise, Ms. Lancaster, Ms. Booker, and, of course, Mr. Keene. Tap, tap the cane on the ground a couple times. Tap that recognition. <laughs> Sergey looks pleased with your response. <laughs> As though he could not have instructed you better himself. <laughs> exactly. See, it's it's a, it's a, it's so it, beautiful. See, I, I just, under my breath, I say, it's, it's a game, it's a game. We welcome our new probationary members of the Camarilla. We're honored to have you with us. We look forward to a long and fruitful association with each and every one of you. At this time, however, I have some important announcements to make. First, Tom, you have rapid reflexes. You're never surprised. You're the only one of the coterie who sees what's about to happen and gets to react. Oh. Something. Oh, I thought you were saying, I thought he was saying that out loud. I thought you were like calling me out. (laughs) How'd you know about my reflexes, (laughs) Kendrick? That's fucking personal information. He's got (laughs) aspects. All right. His aspects is so good, he can see the dots on your camera. Wow, dude. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'll, I'll change my tone of voice. No, that's okay. I was, just, I, was so, I was so in it. My fear Maybe is that a... he wants to be Prince. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. 
My fear is that he wants to be Prince, and we just popped the legit old school Prince out. We don't know where the fuck he went, and he's all goosed. He's Uh, he's on that yak and that bourbon. He's lost in the sauce. (laughs) Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, there's a lot of glass here. There's a lot of glass. Okay, please continue. I'm sorry. I just got very so nervous. So what do I see happen? You're not sure if it's a sound or maybe a motion out of the corner of your eye, but something tips you off, and you look up just in time to see the massive, huge, enormous, gargantuan glass sculpture above the masked kindred's heads begin to fall. So you can take an action. You could get out of the way. You could push someone, pull someone. You could shout. You You're could so move. Big, like, you can yeah, jump. It's falling down on top of everybody who is assembled. Well, it's difficult to say exactly where it's going to land, but it's going to hit a fair number. It's of not you, falling on Kendrick. Sure. It's falling on the audience. On all of you. Yeah, on you're, you're gathered in the center of the atrium, and yeah. it's coming down toward the group. Okay. Uh, weirdly fast. I'm weirdly I'm fast. Weirdly fast. You have preternatural reflexes. You could certainly save yourself. You could you could get out of the way and be safely someplace else by the time that thing hits the ground. Well, if I'm arm in arm with Evangeline. This is a dramatic gas at a party. Carry on. Uh, I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to just unhook and back away. I'm going to okay. stay hold of her and, and pull up myself out of the way with her. You're going to get, out, you're get out of the way. Yeah. Okay. And mm-hmm. I'm going to be like, oh shit! <laughs> the oh shit tips off enough of the kindred that I will let everyone else react. Thank you for at least giving us another <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah, you're thanks, welcome. Buddy fucker. <laughs> I'm a team player. <laughs> so, Amanda. Mm-hmm. When Tom shouts, oh shit, and you look up and realize you're about to get pancaked by this massive glass thing, what do you want to do? Do you want to try to dodge? Do you want to try to get out of the way? Take anybody with you? Stand to take it? Yeah, I mean, like, if uh, is any of the, the party, like, around me? Like, who's, who's around me right now? Let's, let's check out. I think we're, kind of, uh, I think we're yeah. sort of a... You got a uh, tissue for your eye. <coughs> oh, it, true. That's true. true. None of you are within touching distance. Okay. The group is small. There's only about a dozen kindred here total. Right. So it's not a very big mm. group standing around. Um, and I'm guessing my dad is like on the other side. Yeah, I believe he did not care to stand next to him. Yeah, mm. so he's he's all the way over there. So I'm just going to dodge out of the way. Okay, so I, your intention is to get out of just, the way. I just get out of the way. What about uh, Jameson? Um, I am 100% uh, here uh, for my boy, Sergey. Sergey. And so my my plan is I'm I'm looking at this. I'm like, okay, I I need to recognize that there's a non-trivial chance that this comes down and makes all this happen for us. Uh, My plan is to get him. uh, I'm actually going to push him out of the way, even if it exposes me. Even if it means you might take the hit. Right. Wow. Wow. Betty. Like like bring the rod. Basically, just oh use my. it. Use it to force him out of the way. So not just with your hands, but no, you're, no, you're, just you're, you're bar him cane, out. You're gonna shove hard and right. get him out of there. Okay, Betty. Well, I had already decided on what I was gonna do before you spoke, and now I feel like a piece of. <laughs> Sombra. I'm going to grab the nearest waiter and use him to shield myself. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Yes. Mm-hmm. I love it. Just, just going to grab one of, those, one of those tuxedoed fellows serving the, he's the, got a the tray. drinks. And he's got a tray. And mm. get that right up there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Take the brunt of the fall. Okay. That's your intent. Yes. We already know what Tom. Way to doing. make me feel. Like that. Wow! No, no, no! This, but this is. Mm, this I is love it. No, it's classic it's, vampire. It's, no, no. It, His it's, life doesn't matter. Mine does. But yeah. in, a, it, right. in this moment, but 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 this, I, I feel like in that moment, like when it's Betty or somebody else, it's Betty. It's Betty. But it's not even Every somebody time. else to Betty. It's yeah. this thing that's got a tray. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. And he's way more likely to sell it out. Maybe oh, we know. People wouldn't have picked we up know. On that. The help. <laughs> the help. Yeah. What would your butt like? Time to help. <laughs> <laughs> I would never do that to Alfred. Yeah. Time so to help. You yeah. say oh that boy. now. <laughs> but if it had been Alfred standing there instead, would yeah. Betty have done it? Oh. 
Something to think about. Mm-hmm. That would never happen, of course. Never. No, no. In the next hour. It's what, happening in the next game. <laughs> <laughs> what does happen, however, is that sculpture smashes down to the group of kindred. Glass shards of multiple colors fly everywhere. Some of them heard Tom shout and managed to get out of the way or partially out of the way. Some of them were absolutely caught flat-footed or smashed underneath the following sculpture. Tom, you, of course, backpedaled out of there. Evangeline, who doesn't even have time to ask you what the hell's going on. Oh, yeah. And yeah. you managed to, to speed your way out of danger, at least a dozen yards or so. So you get to see the whole thing come down and the, the glass dust blow everywhere from a safe distance. Evangeline is, is dumbfounded. She has no idea what just happened. Um, Betty? Your shield is extraordinarily effective at taking the brunt <laughs> of the damage. Slivers of glass tear into his flesh, mm-hmm. slice Jesus him open, Christ. and what you've got really isn't so much as a person anymore, it's sort mm-hmm. of a human paper doll that's been cut up with a pair of very sharp scissors. You're not Gotta sure. Break a few eggs to make an omelet. <laughs> uh, you're not sure if the person is alive or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do know that your your fingers, your forearms, your clothes is spattered with delicious human blood now, though. Mm. Mm. A plus mm-hmm. value add. <laughs> Dinner and <a> show. Yeah. <laughs> entertainment. Did I mention there'll be entertainment? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was going to do a live band, but it's, I, it seemed like I a better choice. I am entertained. <laughs> Sergey is propelled across the distance of the center of the atrium. His legs go out from underneath him and he's about to, to shout angrily, maybe even curse at you. And then <laughs> suddenly he can't see you anymore because there's an exploding chandelier yes, in the way. Yes, Unfortunately, that means you're within the, the oh, radius of the absolutely. damage. Absolutely, I'm, I'm ready so, to play this role-playing game. You have a dexterity score and you have a athletic score. A athletic score. So let's add those together. With one hunger. With one hunger. What's your total? Uh, six dice. Six dice. Okay. For every success, I'll reduce the damage by one. Oh boy. Here. Now, I want. I, I know that obviously there's a lot of tension right now. There's a lot of fear. Don't worry. I got that one and a dice dice over here. All so right. Good. That's a that's a guaranteed success. We're fine. Yeah. All right. Here we go. <laughs> God. The, the, the best part about this is that the blood die could make it fucking worse. Before you roll. Yeah. I will remind you that if you want to risk increasing your hunger, you can beef up your dexterity by a point. But it might mean you get hungrier. Mm. You could also try. you could try. also gain hunger if the roll is a failure. But you do have yeah. willpower to spend to re-roll any failed. Dice. That's true. That's true. So I have I have some inoculation against like mm-hmm. worst case scenario. So I would roll uh, a die, mm-hmm. and then if it's a success, I don't get hungrier. And your your dexterity goes up either way. It gets way. goosed. All right. You buff either way. Fail. Oh, boy. That little that little Tizzy young lady's skull. voice whispers in your ear, and she says, "Smart move. Smart move." You know, no one would notice if you just took a little sip. Everybody's distracted. You could drink your fill and no one would know. That's true. So go ahead and roll. She's right. She is right. So you're now at two hunger. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, but I got this. You got it. You'll see. I believe in you. Oh, no. Oh, oh, is that oh, one oh. success? One success. Two successes. Okay. Now I feel like it's time to expend a willpower to re-roll three of these failures. I concur. Right? I think that what is do we think? extremely mm-hmm. wise course yeah. right. of action. Let's do that. All right, so over here we got mm-hmm. this toothy skull, but it's fine because he uh, is chewed up by the other successes. All I need is another crit would be yes. very good yeah. here. It'd be good yes. right here. Yeah, if you can get a crit die, you would double your successes. Uh, but still, you did well. Yeah, it's you better. did bad. Okay, it's better. much better. It's better than it was. So here's the good part. The good part is that this is superficial damage. It's falling glass. It's painful. Yeah, it's not yeah. fire. But it's not fire. It's not sunlight. It's not a it, werewolf. It can yeah, decapitate you. Yeah. So it's not aggravated <laughs> damage. Um, but it is, it is quite a bit of damage. Even after we have the incoming damage, you still take three superficial. Oh, so geez. okay, so it's painful like straight through. It's painful. The shards are like little little darts. Little missiles, projectiles, 
there's you know glass dust in your eyes. Could something like these glass rods, just as a point of mm. of of a uh, order, could something like these glass rods pierce a vampire's heart? It could, but it would still be just superficial damage. Even then, okay. Because it's glass. <laughs> the thing to avoid would be like a giant pane of glass cutting your head off. Yeah, because that would be the end. That's what we don't want. That would be that would be bad. That's All what right. I thought was so be funny bad. because there's you would be way more likely to survive that than the waiter, and you just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you that man but, but she what comes off without a scratch now. Yeah, yeah, but because we're under attack, I can't afford to be walking around you know limping. What? You're right. That's true. I have to look out for my for my little family That's here. That's true. We yeah. need me right. at hundred percent. Yeah. Self care. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's self care. Put on your own Safety mask bumps. before you first. put on your waiter's mask. <laughs> <laughs> we wow. didn't get there. You put on it your own the waiter. Same thing as that. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, yeah. It's actually you put Very your waiter different. on. Exactly. Right. Yeah. All right, but it's so, similar. So it turned out. It turned out. I mean, I'm hurt. You're hurt, and but I'm not thirsty. Yeah. But it could have been even worse. Could have been. I mean, that would have been all of it. Could have been terrible. Right. You could have filled up your whole health track. Right. And then the next damage you took would convert to aggravated and you'd be down the road to torpor. Right. You'd and be headed there fast. It. Right. You know what happens. So, Amanda, you wanted to get out of the way too. Yeah. So, same, the same deal for you. Right. Now, look. Dexterity and athletics. Dexterity. Now, listen, are you trying you're to. You're fast, aren't you? Uh, I remember you jogging up the boat. I I do have it's a. That's right. Uh, yeah. yeah. She's like, really I do have sad. running as a. Running? <laughs> as I used to be in track Here. for a little no, while. No, Amanda, hold on. I mean, are you trying to fuck with this anodized? Or? Oh, I do. I think you might want to try that. Very much. Now, do you want to make the, the same. You want to take the same risk with your beast and try to increase your dexterity by risking hunger, or are you yeah. happy with your die pool? Uh. Mm. I think you want one more. You I can think get I want a little hungry. hungry. I want to be like your so, beast. All right, let's but. roll for hunger. Mm, you get hungrier. Uh-oh. It's a failure. Your father's voice whispers in the back of your mind. Oh, he's like over there too. And he's oh. over there, yes. Once again, you fail me. I'm so disappointed in you, Amanda. Can't you do anything right? Can't you even keep the beast me at bay? So, you don't act on it, but the hunger rises. <laughs> Go ahead cool. and make the roll. I have mm. one success. Two successes, right? No, nope. oh, one success. Uh, one I wish, success. I wish that were the case. Uh, yeah. You have the option of spending a willpower point, of yeah. burning a superficial willpower, and rerolling the black dice. Just the black. Yeah. Dice. So no, no. There's only good things can happen here. Yes. Right. Yeah. This can only be good. It can't hurt you. Come on, Amanda. Two more successes. Two more oh, successes. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so you two take three. Now you already have an aggravated damage right. on your track. Oh, yeah. Son of a gun. So you are well down the road to serious, grievous injury. Yeah. You can you see Torpor from here. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. It's right out there on your front it's porch. It's the next yeah. stop. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're Torpor on the subway. one mile. <laughs> <laughs> the next you, exit. If you imagine, if you imagine this cinematically, there's Tom's recognition of the danger, his shout, his reaction. Supernaturally speeding backwards with a very surprised Evangeline on his arm. Betty reacting instinctively by putting a, a human shield between her. A literal and human shield. Literal human shield. Literal, yeah. Jameson taking the better part of Valor by knocking a very surprised Sergei out of the way, and then Amanda throwing herself aside. Several other vampires interacting, and then the explosion of glass and shards, multicolored dust. There isn't a single kindred in the group that doesn't take some damage. Wow. So this was effective. This was very, very effective. It wouldn't have killed any of them. Yeah. Right. At all. It may not be for them. The most seriously injured of the entire group is Valentine, the oracle, the seeress. She's uh, a, a huge piece of glass from a sculpture. A jagged pane slices off one of her arms, and the kindred vitae smell is thick. Everyone's at two, so you are not in danger of uh, risking frenzy just from the scent of the blood in the air, but it's getting close to that. If you get any hungrier, it's gonna be a problem. And then it's pandemonium. And it's kindred shouting and screaming. Right. People are pointing at the ceiling and they're pointing at the sculpture. They're running every which way. Some of them are headed for the exits, trying to get the hell out of here. Kendrick is struggling to his feet, shouting for order and trying to keep things calm. Uh, Odette has got picking big glass shards out of her 
face, Jesus. cursing a blue streak and uh, screaming at uh, uh, um, the um, the Anarchs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who are sort of like, mm. what's going on here? <clears throat> right. I would feel like I would kind of take charge in this situation. For sure she okay. would. Yeah. So, first of all, I would check in with my crew. Okay. Make well, you sure can see everybody still stand. standing. Yeah. So, seeing the, of these two, who looks more banged up? I'm assuming Amanda. Amanda physically yeah. appears to be more grievously injured. She's mm-hmm. already suffered the aggravated wound from touching that, that magical doodad. But you need right? to consider my peacoat in all this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take the poor... Is this man I'm holding? He's probably gone limp. Yeah, he's shredded. Yeah, I'm going to take this poor husk of a man and toss him towards you two and be like... Eat up. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is an interesting situation. Lunch yeah, it is. This, in, this individual is, if not dead, then almost certainly going to die if left untreated. So it would be possible for you to slake your entire hunger, get rid of all your hunger dice, since he is already fated to depart the earth. Yeah, I, I I crouch like a gargoyle over this. Like any pretenses gone, the jaw is hanging like a full foot off the front, and I just oh. and I just look Ugh. at I look at Amanda and I say, "Don't," and then I do it. Wasn't gonna. So <laughs> sink your fangs into the man's flesh, avoiding the pieces of glass that are stuck <clears> into <throat> him in various places. Some might call it a mercy, since he was certainly going to perish. That's my position. Some and might. perhaps in great pain. But in this instance, because of your actions, his passing from this earth is peaceful and calm. Far more so than it would have been if he had been left oh, to simply he's bleed out. Essentially sort of like tranquilized. He's got yeah. that drug yeah. in him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's such a good person. I am. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like his blood all over. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Oh I'm yeah, glad someone can you're, see it. Yeah, you're, 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 he's a prince, that's for sure. Yeah, I just want him to have a quick check of your convictions and make sure that we are not violating. I don't believe that we are. Let's that's, see. I don't here. think so. That's why I didn't do it. Uh, I I don't mm-hmm. believe that we are. No, no, I don't think that we are violating. Um, We're okay. I mean, he's the, literally a bystander the, in all this. The Chronicle te- tenant is be a person and not a beast. And so I leave it to our, our vampire jury. Has, Mercy. Ja- has Jameson acted like a person or a beast? I think it wouldn't, okay. Mm. To defend Jameson, mm-hmm. I don't think this would be on him. I think he's hurt, he's injured, he was just impaled by glass, and I'm, if anything, that would fall on me. Because I'm the one who threw this shredded man at him mm-hmm. and told me, so saw that he was gone for this world and threw him at him like he was a snack. So I think it would, if anything, it would fall on me. So it's up to you if you want to judge me for being a beast. But well, I think much like God, I'm gonna watching from a distance. You've got yeah. the best vantage point right? of the whole thing. I just see his jaw fall open, yeah. like a foot. Like, it's like and, watching one of those snakes eat, right? eat an animal that's bigger than it is. Right? And, and I've seen, and up until now, I have not seen him drop the, yeah. the yeah. facade, right? Right. So I would definitely be grossed out. Tom's like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, there's a limit, right? Yeah. I would say Amanda that's would it. think it was beast-like and would be very disgusted. By is the it, act yeah. itself bestial, though? Is it the Are act of, is it the act of a beast? Um, what does Amanda think? Uh, Amanda does think that it's bestial. Mm-hmm. Well, and he snarled sure. at her. Like, especially yeah. from yeah. a distance, I would have seen him hunkering down and then like, ah. Yeah. I'd call him. Yeah, right? <laughs> so okay. juicy, yeah. sweet. I'd be like, yeah, hey, dude, it's Jameson. Yeah. <laughs> Take it down a notch. Yeah, man, chill. <laughs> Bring that shit in, buddy. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is, you're at an 11. We need I, you to 10. I feel, like, I feel like we're in, you know, in the Roman arena. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... To Tom and Amanda, this is this is the act of a beast and not yeah. the act of a person, regardless of the circumstances. Right. Betty is more understanding, given her experience, her vantage point, of course, being the fact, given the fact that she is the one who arguably perpetrated the deed, or yeah. at least set it in motion. So, two to one, there is a stain upon your soul. 
So we, we take, we look at your humanity and we mark, we put a dat, we put a slash through a box. So a little bit later, we'll get around to what that means. You'll have a chance I to love have it. a chance to think through the philosophical implications oh, I, of yeah. what has happened. I mean, for my part, I definitely agree mm -hmm. with the quorum. For sure. That's how it felt in the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now I have zero hunger. And now you have no hunger at all. You, all your hunger dice are gone. You are full. You are replete. God, it feels good. And then as soon as that's done, I, I'm immediately like up. This isn't going to bother Sergey at all. I'm, I'm, I'm just checking on... I'm just checking on him. I mean, he should have. Did he get pretty clear? Uh, he got a few superficial cuts, you know, on his face and arms, and his 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 beautiful double-breasted suit is, of course, <coughs> all the combat. All the concern <laughs> that I give is for the jacket. Is for the jacket. <laughs> He's quite distressed. Yeah. That his beautiful vintage oh attire God. has been lacerated. Yeah. By exactly. whomever has perpetrated this deed. And I say, oh, Sergey, I, I have a man for this. He takes your hand in both of his oversized clawed appendages oh, yeah, that like may or like. may not be hands yeah. and wrings your hand in gratitude. He expresses to you how grateful he is for your quick actions and your sacrifice. The nobility. Ah, how can I ever repay you? I'm sure you'll find a way. He knows what that means. Amanda, your father is... Yeah, I'm uh, immediately looking for him. He is, he snarls at me. He is hurt. He is, of course, a human and not a vampire. So right. he got the worst of this. Yes. Yeah, he's badly injured and will need medical attention if he is going to pull through. He's got glass uh, sticking out of him in various places. It's probably too dangerous to, rem to remove them easily. You're not sure. Yeah. How much of your medical training do you have? You you operated an x-ray machine what? like an expert. <laughs> not much. Do you you know got a little bit, though, right? Only your dad I, have, I have one point in medicine. Mm, let's go ahead and make the roll. It's uh, intelligence okay, and so medicine. Three, and then I need... Oh, and you need three dice and two of them are hunger mm. dice. Oh, oh wow. Boy. God, welcome now, to this, that's, of course, if you want to try to diagnose how bad off he is. Um, if you're, I think first, mm -hmm. because it's Amanda, she's just going to go, is there a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> a doctor! <laughs> and then obviously when no one <laughs> says anything. Uh, Actually, someone does. Oh, really? Oh, shit. Yeah. A, um, a very disheveled Kennedy. Oh. His, his eyeglasses lost somewhere in the wreckage. His uh, natty blue blazer with the brass buttons half destroyed by the, uh, the damage caused by the glass. Yeah. Uh, and limping. Uh, his uh, his uh, khaki, suit, uh, khaki trousers are ripped open and you can see the, the kindred vitae splashing mm -hmm. his leg. Yes. Your father. Let uh, me look. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tom, Evangeline, is dumbstruck, and she clings to you closely in mute horror at the destruction. How did you know? I'm always doing stuff like this. <laughs> <laughs> Hang around me long enough. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Yep. I'm always doing stuff like this. Wow. Uh, a critical success. So, he makes a quick survey of the damage. And he tells you that your father is going to live, but he will need medical attention very, very quickly. He suggests that he be taken outside, safely away from this location. Yeah. And some medical personnel should be called, or you need to take him to a hospital. Right. Okay. Does your dad have, like, people? Like a driver, that type of situation? Like, he does, he... in fact. His okay, driver's so... here somewhere, and you know the number. Yeah. Okay, so I immediately this call him and, and tell him that I need help. Um, to help me pick up my father and bring him to the hospital. Odette approaches you. I was going to say, I'm looking for Odette. Mm -hmm. Did you see what happened? No. Me neither. Let's check find it out. out. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, be through yeah, great yeah. And it's like freeze frame, and it's just like... <laughs> yeah, it's, exactly. It's like Odette and Betty, mm -hmm. sunglasses. Yeah! <laughs> Mike, brushing off my velvet jumpsuit, mm -hmm. and I crack, I like break my heels. My I, shoes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's not, that's not, very good. Wow. Mm -hmm. Let's get up there. Come on. Let's go. Uh, for the ship. 
it's a daddy. Just as long as everybody <laughs> is on the same page, mm-hmm. and that's it. If, yeah, if you're that's looking for ship. it later, that's what you're looking for. That's the daddy. hashtag. Daddy. 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 <laughs> that's the hashtag. Okay. So put it to work. <laughs> Make use. <laughs> I give you Headed upstairs. <laughs> mm-hmm. Odette leads you to a stairway that winds around the atrium and leads up to the very top through a door that opens up into a sort of um, uh, catwalk area with lots of different little wooden beams and uh, metal bridges that connect like a, a lattice work uh, above the height of the atrium. You can look out beneath and see the damage, the destruction, the kindred running around and mm-hmm. freaking out. Up here had to be where it happened. Mm-hmm. And Odette is beginning to shinny out on one of the metal beams to where the, uh, the chandelier, or the sculpture rather, was secured and starts looking around. Mm-hmm. Can you do the, the thing with the eyes? No. Yeah? It's well, not my bag. I mean, they call you a hound. Can any, you smell something or sniff it out? Well, yeah. <laughs> she looks back from her <laughs> precarious perch on the beam like, are you fucking putting me on? <laughs> We're going to do this now? <laughs> Take a look around. Um, I want to see, because this is like hi, like higher up, mm-hmm. how would the, the person potentially get here? Is there like mm-hmm. an open oh, window yeah. pane or sure. um, mm-hmm. raised roof type yeah. thing? Yeah. It, doesn't take, it doesn't, take a, doesn't take any role to find what you're looking for. Um, above you, the very topmost part of the atrium, um, there is a skylight. And this is probably where they got in. Is it open? Yeah, it's open. Is there any like... Rope hanging down from it. Can I reach it? You're gonna take a look. Yeah, you yeah. can. You can definitely jump up and, and reach it. It's yeah, a, it's a quick hop. I jump up, and as I do so, I'm like, "Come on, keep up!" <laughs> <sighs> you can hear her cursing at you from the beam. Man, this is that classic Odetti banter <laughs> <laughs> that the people crave. Yeah. yeah, we've been wanting oh, this. Oh man! <laughs> Just hum, 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 hum. Okay. You pull yourself up on top through the skylight, and you're up on the roof of the museum up here. From below. You can hear her voice. Hey, this wasn't cut. This looks like it was know, burned through, melted, something. Anybody up there? So you're up on the roof yeah. looking around. It's still night. Dawn is maybe 90 minutes away now, so hmm. things are getting a little, a little tense. Yeah. You are. But I. I'm an old vampire. Mm-hmm. I know what corrosive vitae is. Of course you do. So that's my theory. That's your working theory? Is yeah. That somebody opened up a vein and I've spilled seen people corrosive do it vitae before. on them? Just mm-hmm. chewed through? Yeah. Yeah. For those of yeah. you who don't know, you can turn your blood into... Certain kindred can basically turn their blood into acid. Wow. Like, like alien. Uh, like shit. alien, yeah. Yeah. I have that. Wait, you do? Amanda can do it. Do you have a little tiny mouth too that comes out? Like, yeah, I do. <laughs> like, how, how hardcore are you about it? Like, yeah, that nice. hardcore. Yeah. It peeps like a bird. Beep beep. <laughs> My eat you with my little mouth. Beep beep beep. That's something you don't hear every day. <laughs> it happens. It's not. It's not I'm checking Betty's character sheet. Yeah. Ooh, Betty. Hmm. I don't like any yeah. of these, these sounds. Yeah, that's Interesting. Terrible. Okay. Um, um, wooden chirps. How about this roll? Let's make it wits and hmm. Spicy. Investigation is the most appropriate roll, but you have no dots in investigation. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to allow you to substitute um, streetwise. Oh. Okay. Okay. I don't know why yeah, I'm like, I'm going to put these down. I just it's, really wanna, it's in sympathetic excitement. I want to roll so bad. <laughs> please. I'm like I the roll, opposite. Please. I don't want to roll no, at I all. Zero please hunger. Please suck. Can I roll? It's a clean roll. Wow. Oof, oh, I got dude. a crit. Nicely done. <laughs> Yowza. Yeah, that's real good. Six successes. You notice uh, two facts or details that you believe might be important. First of all, from your vantage point, you can, of course, see... Um, the area at the street level around the museum, and you don't like what you see. A lot of vehicles have arrived since you Shit. group has entered the Elysium. Okay. And both sides of the street are cordoned off by cars. There are a couple of black SUVs at either end of the street 
And it's the only street le- leading in and out of the area. I know what a hit looks like. Yeah, I mean, that's... Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're in the kill box. <laughs> the other thing that you notice, you recall that the museum is situated right alongside the Theophos Waterway. Mm-hmm. So you see a little boat. You can't tell if it's a... From this vantage point, without without supernatural eyesight, you can't tell if it's actually a boat or maybe one of those little zodiac rubber raft kind of oh, things. Yeah, sure. Uh, but it is pulling away from the dock nearest the museum and headed out into the waterway. And you're pretty sure that there are figures aboard, individuals, two, maybe three. You're not okay. certain. Tom, hmm? Evangeline leads you a little bit further away from the mayhem to where you won't be overheard. Mm -hmm. At least, think you won't be overheard. Tom. This city is in a lot of fucked up danger. Forgive my language. It's okay. I told you Kendrick wants to be Prince. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's not the only one. I don't know who did this, but I'm really worried that you and your buddies are gonna get blamed. This is ridiculous. Prince was a once in a lifetime artist. Nobody else can ever take his place. She looks super confused. <laughs> it's generational, like you don't, you can't just be Prince. You don't understand. I do. <laughs> you, you're, the, you're the new kids in town. Yeah. Yeah. And KOTB. Yeah. New, kid, new kids on the block. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I'm kind of like into classical music. Yeah, new kids. Yeah. Um, no. The point is, Tom, I don't want you to get blamed for this. So be careful. Why the fuck would I get blamed for this? Because it's it almost con- fell on me. It's convenient to blame the new kids. All right. Some horse shit. Yeah. Some horse shit. Well then, uh, I would want to try to round up my posse and, yeah. and, and explain to them that we should probably get out of here. Okay. Amanda. Yeah. Your driver, or I should say your father's driver, has shown up. He's horrified, but he knows what to do. Okay. Um, I know that Amanda would stick with her dad and go to the hospital with him. I don't know if that is uh, something that I could do. I think that's really cool. I think that's she, I mean, awesome. she's known her, I mean, her dad's really In that back, well, especially after how fucked up the thing was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, to, like, but then as soon as there's a crisis, like, you instantly revert. Yes, exactly. That, exactly. <clears throat> that. Like I think she, that's cool as hell. That's the priority, you know, to her life. So. Are you going to let any of your coterie know that you're leaving? No. Are you going to text them later? Her 100% focus is on him. She okay. Doesn't, she doesn't even bat an eye. She just leaves. You and his driver, Bixby. Yeah. Bixby's managed to pick up your father under his knees and shoulders and gently carry him out of the Elysium. Mm-hmm. Get him into the back of the Mercedes and peel off yeah. to the nearest hospital. Fortunately, you don't have to go very far from here. It's right. maybe a 15-minute drive down at Tacoma General. But they don't have any problem getting out? So, what you know, of course, is that Bixby didn't park in the street. Too smart. That's a really good question. I don't think you're going to notice the uh, cordon, though, the blockade. Yeah, you're probably, yeah. where he takes you, you're probably out. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So <clears throat> I don't think you're paying attention to what's going on in the area. No, not at all. You're focused on your dad My and getting dad him out of here? Making sure, yes, making okay. sure he's okay and yeah. not going to die right in front of him. Okay, me. Yeah. cool. So no, they don't get blockaded in. They don't, okay. they don't get struck. Um, at any point, do you text the Coterie and let them know that you're going anywhere? Or do, you just, or do you just disappear? I just disappear. I would just say that disappear. I would I would text them once I find out that my dad is going to live. Yeah. For sure. And that he's okay. Do you guys have like a group chat or a Slack or a Facebook oh group? Oh my god. Well, I can't be in it. So yeah, it's hard for you. Be, yeah, that would be very... I'm, they There's might, but I wouldn't know about a it. A steady stream of pigeons. Tom still, <laughs> Tom still just has a pager. What the like, <laughs> like you could 911 page him and he could try to find your phone or something, but... Yeah. That's about it. That's about it. Yeah. Wow. It's one of those old digital text readers, too. Yeah. So you could actually spell words out in those with numbers. Yeah, that's good. Like, you know, yeah. Like a two-way pager. Motorola. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, pretty. exactly. I, I, think that, I think that Jameson definitely has a phone and definitely is ready to receive information on this phone. 
Well, I feel like I would definitely give them the heads up once I see that it's blockaded off. But I also really want to, like, I've clocked the importance of finding out who did this so that we don't get blamed. Right. So you've already pulled some info. Yeah. So I'm, I'm that, going after yeah. this boat. I'm really sorry. I know from a metagaming perspective, I probably shouldn't, but it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also know Odette has your numbers. So I'm going to ask Odette to text them. Yeah. Street blocked, and that's it. Street's then, blocked? Yeah, street's blocked. Can you text my friends and then come along? We really have to catch this boat. Text your friends. Boat? Come on. <laughs> Shit. Yes, come on, come on, Odette. Keep up. You're lovely. You're wonderful. And as I'm doing this, I'm like pulling like a scarf out of my purse and tying up my hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but those, if, of you, yeah, those of you who are in the atrium, that would be Tom, and that would be Jameson. Mm -hmm. Hear Odette's voice from way at the top, up, up at the near the ceiling. Loud. Yeah. Blockade! Don't use the street! Everybody looks up as though this yeah. evening just couldn't possibly get any more worse. They murmur among themselves, fuck, you know. People start asking who is responsible, what is going on here. Yeah. Yeah. While this is happening, uh, I just, I, I try to identify where Thomas is in the room. He's easily, easily seen <clears throat> at, the, at the edge yeah. of the room, standing with Evangeline. As soon as I identify him, make a mental note that that's where I'm going to be going next, just conspiratorially uh, to my new best friend, uh, Sergei, I say, if a gentleman of your discretion uh, wanted to leave a building like this mm. uh, without other uh, <clears throat> indiscreet gentlemen uh, discovering them, uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on the matter. I, sir, am of the opinion that one would be best served by, shall we say, subterranean means. Exquisite. In fact, if you will do me the signal honor, I would be delighted to show you and your compatriots the route. Exactly. I, I, I lock eyes with you, Tom, mm -hmm. and I, I gesture to you to come near. Uh, okay. And I, I could, I, I'm basically like a, like a jello jiggler. Like there's just there's nothing left of my yeah. body Jingle. here. And so it, it is almost certainly a novel uh, entreaty to have this perforated man so, do this. So I see Jameson calling me over. I grab Evangeline Tan and I look at her and I say, do you have a way out of this place? I, mean, I came in a car, but it sounds like the streets are blocked. Come with me. And I, I pull her towards Jameson. You were looking better and better tonight. Yeah. Honestly. She thinks about it for half a second. You think she might actually refuse, but she agrees and nods and comes with you. Okay. I've hung out with this guy enough to know that I'm usually better off with him than not. Yeah, surely he knows how to get out of places. Yeah. She looks <clears throat> quite disturbed by the sight of the two Nosferatu standing so close to her. And she edges just a little bit more close to you. Yeah, I say, now that we're next to them, I say like loud enough, obviously, so that everyone can yep. hear. I know they're really gross, and they smell terrible, and they're disgusting to look at. It's hard to not just want to vomit in their presence. <laughs> I know, I know. But... He's gotten me out of some tough scrapes, so. Uh, I, I, I apologize to Evangeline, his new friend, um, uh, and resume uh, a visage and overall presentation that has less um, oh, nocturnal horror. He thinks this is better. Just so you employ stay cool. <laughs> you employ the supernatural ability to blend in. Indeed. So your, your, uh, your features sort of swim. They do that wavy, funny <laughs> scooby-doo. <laughs> And instead, in, in moments, instead of the, the grotesquerie that was before you, right. there is um, a nondescript, rather ordinary looking person wearing the uniform of a uh, museum security guard. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. You look like you belong Yeah, there. exactly. Right. Like, uh, like, imagine that the glass museum is like a play set that you would purchase. I'm like one of the figurines that comes with the play set. <laughs> Right? He is that <clears throat> nondescript. He's yeah. that forgettable, really. Yeah. He looks like he belongs here. That's the beauty of the power, really. You, you get to mimic the appearance of something that no one would, no one would call out. No one would expect it would be out of place. I, I, and to Sergey, I say, shall we? By all possible means. Do we have Betty? Or no, Betty's still up on the roof. You're running towards the, the boat. Roof. I'm getting She's off the so boat. You and I. Exactly. She we, wants we're to leading check out the boat. Raft, boat, mm -hmm. don't know. Zodiac. Getting it. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. And you are on your way to the hospital. Yes. With your father. Okay. So, Odette has climbed up to the roof with you, mm-hmm. and she is looking out over the water, and she's looking to the east, and she's like, you know, we got like an, a little over an hour, and then... We have to at least get like a good look at them, or... Well, what do you think? You want to steal a boat? I'm really I want to steal a boat. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm excited it. about this plan. Okay, I'm happy so to be a part of it. You hop yes. down from the roof, yes. and then I'll jump down, and you can catch me. Okay, check, check the alley here. Is it blocked off? Yeah. Look, look, more SUVs. Who the hell are these guys? So, fire escape. Sounds Let's do good. it. All right, she clambers down the fire escape by the side of the building. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to avoid notice by whoever's watching the streets and the alleys, you will have to sneak. I can just... Meld into the shadows. You can, of course, employ the supernatural ability to blend in with darkness mm-hmm. itself. We're and it's gonna, pretty dark out here. We're going to mm-hmm. find somebody who is good so at this, So you're going to see too. me put my heels on the side of the ladder, slide down, and then just when you, I hit the bottom, <laughs> I'm not there anymore. Doing the fireman thing? Yeah, yeah. And then when she's Oof. waiting at the bottom, I'm just not there. You are just gone. Mm-hmm. That brings her up short. <laughs> the hell, Jerome! Don't leave me here! Discretion is the better part of valor. Oh, fuck Come on. This, this night sucks. <laughs> she. Oh, Daddy. Oh, Daddy. I need to make a uh, uh, roll for her stealth. Oh, come on, Odette. Come on, come kid. Come on, Odette. She's a little hungry, but not she a lot hungry. It. She's quite she dexterous. I can't say this is like her thing. I feel like yeah, I, bet I bet she's neat. She's, she's more about the. Ooh, oh, she's, she's gonna need, she's gonna need to burn uh, willpower. Let's see here. Like I said, so these guys know their shit. It sounds like. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a little bit better. She doesn't embarrass you. Okay. By getting detected. Okay, good, good, good. There's good, a good. there's a brief moment where you think. She's going to blow it when she gets to the end of the fire escape and she sort of loses her grip for a moment and nearly tumbles onto some nearby trash cans, but she saves it just at the last possible mm-hmm. second. No, she, she collapses onto a discarded drum set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of noise. And unseen by the observers, she quickly makes her way to the edge of the cement walkway that separates museum's property from the water. Now the waterway is salt water. It's connected to Commencement Bay, which is part of Puget Sound, which eventually gets out to the sea if you go all the way up to Seattle through the Ballard Locks, etc. Okay. The boat is speeding away toward the mouth of the waterway. You guys are looking around for a vehicle. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not hard to find all kinds of boats tied up to the waterway, including some that might even catch that thing. Ooh. Very fast vehicles. Yeah. They don't belong to you. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. The fastest one. Doesn't seem to bother Odette either. Yeah. yeah I didn't yeah. think it would. So it's that one right there. El Tigre. The tiger. That's <laughs> gotta be fast, one. right? Tigers That's the fast. fastest name here. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Shit. We both hop in. Jumps in the boat. Yeah, exactly. I love her. Uh, now, she's she's awesome. Awesome. how do you start it? Um, <laughs> I, I, I feel like... I feel like you might know this. Yeah. yeah. I've spent some time on boats. I mean, yeah. I love the ocean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you, uh, I believe you have not only spent time on boats, you, have, you, you are in possession of at least one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. A collector. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That so, one's a sailboat, though, because uh, it's more thing. of like a sport boat. Different But thing. it's okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let us, uh, let us make a quick roll. Okay. That's interesting. Um, normally... Modern boats do require some sort of key or mm-hmm. starter or whatever. But this, uh, because fate has it, this is an older model, and you can get this thing up and running. Nice. Now, there is the matter of how it is protected, and that is its anchor and the fact that it's chained up to the dock. Huh. Odette says, give me a hand. Okay. She grabs the chain here. Put yourself into it. Let's go. Oh, I'm not very strong. snap it straight off. Do you want me to... You can see her tense. You can see something She'll do most of the lifting. Something is happening with Odette. Okay. She's calling on supernatural strength. It's clear. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add a die to her pool for your help. What is your strength? 
Um, one. 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 <laughs> That's the dice right there. There it is. Yeah. Did you hear it? It made a very yeah. pleasing <laughs> sound. Oh yeah, there we go. Mm. This is important. Yum, yum, yum. No, it's still the same. Two, down. There's a metallic snap! She rips the chain in half, throws both ends of it into the water. Splash! Well, now I know why they call you the hound. <laughs> I know. I go back to the stairway. Exactly. Get that helm. <laughs> I feel bad about that smelling sound earlier, or me making fun of her not being able to track. Haul up the anchor. Okay. So okay. I, I haul it Do up. Do a there. chasse. All right. Mm-hmm. This thing started and is on the way. Okay. So you are headed out into the middle of the waterway, pouring on the speed, mm-hmm. and you're trying to catch the fleeing boat. Okay. Yeah. Tom and Jameson and Sergey and Evangeline, you are on your way out. Sergey has led you into a back room, a disused storeroom, mm-hmm. mops, brooms, tarps, various tools and equipment. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll and die in here. <laughs> There's no way out. No, I, I would never permit it. <laughs> this is insane. Be, be at ease. You've led us into a trap. I trust you. Be at you. ease, Mr. Holland. I'm so sorry, Evangeline. I thought I could trust this bastard. <laughs> it is not as it appears. Allow me. He walks over to a tool shelf and hauls it open. It swings open on hinges, revealing a doorway behind it. Secret door, let's go! Indeed. <laughs> this way. <laughs> Evangeline doesn't know what to think of this anymore. She is completely ready for this to be over. Uh, she sticks close, stays with you, and lets right. the Nostra I'll, I'll go let, ahead. Uh, I'll let Sergei sort of continue on, because mm-hmm. he knows what it is, and then I'll make sure this gets closed up You're securely close behind, behind you. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sergei flips on a few light switches, some uh, very low watt bare <clears throat> bulbs in the ceiling flicker on, revealing a corridor. This will take us out. Hell yeah. You must trust me, good sir. Never doubted you. I would never betray the friend of my friend. And I bow. I believe in you 100%. <laughs> you notice he hasn't spoken to Evangeline at all. That's fine. She's me. Amanda. It's the ice. An emergency room near dawn. Mm-hmm. It's not a fun place. No, should not be here. There are people here who need genuine help, including your father. Mm-hmm. When you arrive, of course, the medical attendees on duty spring into action. They recognize that this man is grievously injured, he needs blood, he needs attention, and the machinery of the medical facility takes over. Right. But that leaves you in the position of having to deal with the medical machinery. The medical machinery is people who want to know Who are you? Who is he? How did this happen? Where did it happen? Should we call the police? Let's see your identification. Mm -hmm. And it is this point that you realize all of this is probably being recorded by security cameras in the hospital emergency waiting room. Right. Um, So I'm guessing they're just looking at me. And I say, uh, you know, I just found him like this. Um, I don't know what happened. If I'm being honest, I don't know. I found him like this and I brought him straight here. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do, right? Like, if someone's injured, I'm bringing it here. I don't know why I'm getting the third degree when my dad is bleeding (laughs) out. (laughs) She's just like so panicked that she's just... She forgets her story halfway through. Yeah, she's just like... I think this calls for a role of charisma and... Performance. Now you have a specialty in acting because I it was do. one of the dozen or so <laughs> elect- majors elect- or electives that you took yeah, at university. So you managed second. to pick up a little skill. So you've got a great die pool here. You've got four dots in charisma, so that's yeah. four dice. You've got two dots in performance, plus a bonus for acting. So seven dice. That's a heap. Two reds, but it's it's still a heap. I got a good feeling about this. Well, it was Did you wow. fix it? Yeah. Uh, I that, that is I a re-roll? single success. You may burn another willpower point to re-roll up to three of the failed dice. 
Yeah. Okay. Be sure you reroll the anodized because that's like the. It's kind of failing us lately. Well, we got but uh, it's because we have failed. Yeah. It. Oh, we're, is that what it we're looking for, for a total of four successes here, so we need two more. Two yeah. more. Two and more. And then you guys met. It came <coughs> through for us. So Fantastic, that's right. anodized. Perfect. I'm so sorry. I, I, I'm so sorry. You must be so upset. I can't imagine the distress that you're in. I really do apologize. We know. We understand. We can take care of the paperwork later, miss. Thank you. You just have a seat in chairs. We'll call you when we know something. Okay. Um, okay, but before you go, is he going to be okay? Do you feel like he's going to be okay? Yeah, I'm not the doctor, miss. Okay, let me know as soon as you can. And I'm like looking around, like, I gotta get out of here. Oh, yeah, it's just, they're just coming in. Yeah. The walls are starting to close in. Uh, I wait a long, I, I guess I wait as long as I possibly can, and then if I have to leave, I go. Oh. Yeah. Bixby assures you that he will stay and okay. that uh, he will contact you as soon as the doctor tells him anything. Thank you, Bixby. But, 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 but miss, we're, I mean, what happened? I don't, look. I don't need this from you, too, okay? Uh, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta get out of here. So you gotta, you're gonna leave him there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, you have to, right? Right? I have to, yeah. Uh, and so I, I... I mean, is the light coming through at this point? Like, You can feel on your skin that telltale prickling sensation that warns you when dawn is coming and you know you have got to get to shelter very, very soon. Okay, um, I still want to really check up on my friends though. Is it on the way? Like, can I like... You don't think you can make it all the way back home in time. Okay. Where the fuck I really, are you going to go? I really fucked myself here. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like an excellent place to take a break. Okay. Well, why would it be? <laughs> I need to think, so that's perfect. Why? Welcome back to Seattle by Night, our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, which we left in a tense moment. I'll say. Our coterie has split up. We split the coterie. Isn't you never split the coterie. There's some Is that true also? Awesome about mm -hmm. that? Oh, okay. Well, we're going to find out, right? Uh, I did apologize, but then I did it anyway. You did it anyway. I thought I thought that was that was nice of you to apologize. But Amanda split the Thank party you. too. It's like she did. Yeah, I went through. I went for my character instinct. I didn't have mm -hmm. a choice. Amanda has left her wounded, injured father with his driver Bixby at the yes. hospital, and you are out of the emergency room trying to decide what okay. to do. It is at that moment. When a black, low slung, sleek limousine rolls up the emergency room drive, it comes to a halt next to you. Uh, the power window back seat rolls down. <laughs> a familiar face looks out of the window. You've seen this kindred before, you saw him, met him on the boat, the comet, where you freed Mr. Gravenstein. Oh, fuck. It it's... is Mr. Anthony Giovanni. I wrote his name down. Anthony? I have Anthony uh, of Clan Giovanni written on my paper. Mm -hmm. I say, uh... Need a lift? Yes, very much. Yes, please. Get in. I get in. Um, I just sit there and I'm like... The interior oh. of the limousine oh. is Posh, you are no stranger given your father's uh, wealth and right. you know your family position. Uh, you're no stranger to limousines and, and other luxurious means of transportation. But this is in particular well appointed. You think that's a custom interior design on this thing. Wow. The seats are Italian leather, not ordinary leather. And the uh, accoutrements are um, very tasteful, mm. if a little understated. Right. I say, wow, beautiful car you have. Thank you. You look terrible. I do feel terrible. <laughs> well, speaking of that, let's uh, let's talk about healing. So, um, you've taken some superficial damage. Superficial damage is a lot easier to heal than aggravated. Remember how hard it was to heal the ag damage? You had to yes. make three rouse checks and risk hunger three times to heal it. Right. Um, fortunately, um, you don't have to do that for superficial. You can heal superficial damage at any time you want to. Right. Your blood potency means that every time you make a rouse check, you can heal a point of superficial damage. Okay. So it's a much better ratio. Right. Wild. Huh. 
Okay. It's just whether you fail it or not. Whether you fail the hunger check or not, you still heal the damage. Hmm. The only the only risk is you might get hungrier. You are at hunger two, so your options, Amanda, are to uh, risk getting hungrier, mm -hmm. but heal damage, or continue to stay wounded and hope for the best. It's kind of a devil's bargain. You specialize in this type of bargain. It's kind of my thing. <laughs> Two is pretty hungry, though, right? my favorite storytelling maxim is. I know, that's why I don't want to be hungry. You can get what you said you wanted and still it's not like be hangry. happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is hangry. I, I think I'm going to keep the damage because... You're going to stay wounded. Because if I get hungry, if I get hungrier, I just, I imagine things getting worse for me than, than my it's health. It's generally the way it goes. Yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep it as is. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to keep it as is. It's fine. Anthony looks, looks you up and down and uh, asks if you uh, need a little refreshment. A um, little refreshment. That would be lovely. He pushes a button on a, the armrest. A leather panel slides away, revealing what looks to be a refrigerated containment space okay. in the limousine. And you see plastic bags full of blood. Now, just so I know, I don't usually. I usually have to drink flesh, fresh blood. Flesh blood. Fresh blood. Mm -hmm. um, you, have a, you have a predator style. Right. But in your case, uh, and in the case of most kindred, the predator style is preference. It's like, um, oh, okay. it's like choosing to be on a diet. That's how you prefer to get your blood, but you don't have to. You can, okay. go, you can get blood in other ways, especially in an emergency. Right, which I feel like I'm in. So I go, thank you very much, and I just like go for it. Like I, you go for it. Yeah. Help yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and as I'm drinking... It's good. It's whole-blooded, too. It hasn't been fractionated at all, like that nasty stuff that comes out of a blood bank. Perfect. Yeah, no, this is I'm not great. appreciating the judgment right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> It's a lot of this. So I can take. I already got it from this guy. Off. So you can remove a point of hunger. You can go Perfect. from two to one. You Perfect. can't. You can't get rid of all your hunger this way, but you can put yourself out of the danger zone. Okay, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah. Um, and as I'm drinking, I say, "How did you know it was the hospital?" It's my hospital. Oh. Well, my family's hospital. Right. Okay. Um, and Where so, are your friends? I don't know. I, I just left. I had to take care of my um. Were you involved in what happened at the museum? In that I got hurt, yes. Otherwise, no. I did not cause that, if that's what you mean. I take it the individual you brought to the emergency room was... A friend. ...important to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very important friend of mine. Don't worry about the security cameras. That'll all get taken care of. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, I was actually just noticing it as I was talking. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I realized <clears throat> that that could be problematic. So I appreciate it so much, Anthony. I do have a question for you, Miss Booker. Yeah? Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I know, I understand that it was a bad idea, and I just... Do you? I, well, I do now. At the time, I just wanted to take care of my friend. He's important to me. And I wasn't thinking, admittedly. We have very little time. If you don't have shelter for the night or for the day, I'll help you out. But I need to go back to the museum and check something out before. Yes, yeah, so I want to head back anyway. It's going to be a very close call. Okay. If we absolutely have to, this limousine will keep us protected for a short time while our driver takes us someplace safe. Okay. If we absolutely have to meet the sunrise in here. Right. Okay. By a so car. would you not be safe inside a car? Like what tinted windows? Norm normally not. The, um, the sunlight, any exposure to any sunlight would eventually harm you and kill you. If, even if the windows were really dark, yeah. it would be yeah. tough. You need cover, full cover from the okay. sun. So he's got something up his sleeve here. Mm. Whatever, okay. whatever is going on here isn't normal. Okay. Um, I say, yeah, I want to head back in the room. I want to make sure my friends are okay. I, I shouldn't have left. So, yeah. I want to make sure they're okay. okay. The driver, who you, you can't see behind the tinted partition that separates the passenger compartment from the driver's compartment, speeds up 
and gets this thing rolling back toward the museum. Meanwhile, back in the tunnel, Sergei is leading the way, flipping light switches as he goes, illuminating the passageway ahead of you. This seems to be some sort of um, uh, maybe a access corridor for maintenance, or maybe it was for electrical work or something like that. He informs you that it connects to the larger system of municipal tunnels that connect downtown and form a, uh, well, forms a highway. I, I, I make a mental note. There are arterials <clears throat> and um, detours and side routes. It's quite efficient, if I do say so myself. Okay. I, I say, I regard the uh, dim bulbs, and I say, I, I wouldn't change a thing. You know, it wasn't an aesthetic choice, but, 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 precisely. Ah. You are enchantingly observant. Well, uh, it's, it's certainly been said, Sergei. I mean, how long until we uh, find a place of safety that we can... There are several shelters that are prepared that uh, you may use if you do not have a means of shelter of your own. The um, <clears throat> accommodations are perhaps not comfortable or luxurious, but they will serve. When you say not comfortable or luxurious... Ah, um, they are but rooms. So we'll just, we'll just they are, stack ourselves like cordwood. Hmm. The rooms contain beds, blankets, lockable doors. Oh, my clan has foreseen these things. Oh, this sounds better than my place. Let's go. <laughs> Eventually it makes a, makes a disgusted face, but <laughs> it's like, well, it, I don't live that far away. So depending on where and when we come out, Oh, you know. they might be able to project themselves uh, maybe to a, a place of safety that she has control of. Well, let's see where this, yeah. this takes us. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly, Tom, but you know, you're more than welcome to stay. Well, sounds like I got two hots and a cot down here in the sewer, so I'm, I think I'm good. I see. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I understand. It's at this point where you hear the noises. Sergei stops short. There's someone here. Listen. And he's right. You can hear noise up ahead in the tunnel from a darkened portion of it that isn't yet illuminated. Footsteps, perhaps? Maybe the murmur of voices? Yeah. Evangeline says, shh. She tilts her head. They're kindred. They're coming here. <clears throat> I make myself uh, absolutely invisible. Bam! Vanishing from the mind's eye, as it were. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, for all intents and purposes, are no longer standing there. Gone. Sergei, the same. <laughs> Simply vanishes. He's not there. Okay. Evangeline... Is gonna put. I mean, how far away are they? They're, I mean, I'm a huge guy in a tiny hallway. Yeah. I'm not gonna bamf out of here. There's enough. There's enough space for for two kindred to walk side by side. So it's it's not cramped, but it's not spacious either. Yeah. And it appears to be just one long corridor that you've been traversing. You haven't seen any side doors or or uh, other ways out. So there's ahead yeah. and behind. At this point, apparently, you haven't gotten to the to the sections. Uh, that are more hospitable that Sergey described. So, is there a, a light switch with a bulb near me? Yes. I want to turn it off. Click. So, the area that you're standing in is plunged in darkness. Yeah. You hear a voice from the deeper darkness up ahead. Shit. And then the unmistakable sound of a firearm, a pistol. Action sliding. Click, clack. Meanwhile, on the boat. 
Thank Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can see that, that thing where it's like you're looking at the character sheet, okay, mm. which of these things is going to save my shit? Stop bullet. What do I do? Which one? Melts gun. Okay. So. <sighs> Out there on the glassy waterway, there's no wind, nothing to disturb the water except the two boats speeding away from each other. Right? Or by one is speeding away from you and you are in pursuit. You're at the wheel, I think. Yeah. You're guiding this thing, mm -hmm. pouring on the speed, getting every ounce of power out of the engine that you possibly can. You can see can. her too, like yeah. at the, the wheel, like yeah. the scarf blowing. Yeah. yeah. Looking good doing it poster. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Odette is clinging to the rail up on the front, leaning out as far as she dares, trying to get a look at what's going on here. At this time of the morning, in the pre-dawn, there's no traffic out here on the waterway. You're alone. So there's nothing you have to worry about. No other boats. Just you and the quarry. So, three turns and out. Okay. They're going to try to evade. You're going to try to catch up. Okay. This will be a test of your seamanship. Right. Let's go with. Ooh, I was going to say let's go with your drive skill, but um, actually that might be okay. Maybe a cult. <laughs> is it like a demonic boat? Yeah, <laughs> it's just a big skull. <laughs> Survival stealth. No, drive is the drive is the thing you go with. Okay. Um, let's make it wits and drive. Okay. This Ooh. is this is a combination of your skill with the vehicle, but also your ability to think quickly mm -hmm. as they try to evade you. Okay. So I get five. So you get five. So we'll each roll three, and we'll compare successes. Three times, I mean. Daddy. Yes. Do it. Okay. Uh, their pool not quite as good as yours. Okay. okay. Ready? Good. First roll. Two successes. Two. Tie? Yes. Tie goes to the active vampire. Ah! So. Nice. <laughs> First thing that happens is you start closing the distance, getting every ounce of power out of the yeah. engine, as you mentioned. You know how to open up the fuel line and push it to its limits. Mm -hmm. There is a danger that something will go horribly wrong with the mechanism if you fail, but mm -hmm. for now, you're going to close the gap. Okay. Next roll. Okay. They're going to try to make a quick turn and actually double back and get out of your way. Okay. Ready? Okay. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Four successes. <laughs> That's more than you got. How many did you get? How many did you get? One success. So your options are to just accept the outcome and try to make it up on the third roll, or to spend willpower and re-roll three of the failed dice. But you'd have you'd have to at least get three more successes to tie. That's uh, yeah. those are bad odds. Those mm -hmm. are not but they're odds. gonna whip back around, right? Right. So there might be a clever opportunity here. Oh, it's I'm a machine. Gonna, I'm gonna tell. My 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 Bruja friend to throw the anchor in their boat. <laughs> wow. We have Straight a giant the, anchor. Straight as off soon the as they front. go, yeah. As soon as they come by, just like toss the anchor in. So this is going to be up to her. Multiple things happen at once. <laughs> First thing that happens yes. is the uh, fleeing boat makes a hairpin turn in the middle of the waterway, and as they pass you and come parallel, mm -hmm. you need to make a roll to make sure that you don't collide. Okay. And Odette will make a roll to see if she can whip the anchor into their boat She's and hang so on. Cool. Okay. And they will make a roll to see if they live through this. Oh, okay. oh my god! <laughs> you might have to get them. You might have to go down and get them. Odette's strong, so I feel oh, like she's, she's gonna she's gonna kill it. Okay. okay. Uh, let's see you and Odette roll first. Uh, Odette will spend um, willpower to uh, rather risk hunger. Oh, she gets hungrier. She snarls. I'm going to as well, because I want to buff up this roll. Yeah, that will add her hunger dice, in, add two hunger, but it will also increase her uh, her strength. Ha! Huh. Wait, no, that's, that's bad. Too. That's bad. <laughs> it isn't as bad as it could be. Ooh, that's yeah. so your your beast hungry. snarls hungry. gleefully, begins to strain at his prison, but you do buff up. So you get to add a die to the roll. A black die. Oh, right, 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 right. And a hunger die. So you go from... Um, one to two. One hunger to two hunger. Right. And add a black die. Oh. Okay. Right? So you add a black die. Sounds good. Do you want my black die? Wait, I thought... I still only get six die, though. Well, let's see. Uh, your uh, wits is four, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, your and drive one is, drive. Your drive is five. Uh, so um, you have, and one bonus dice, so it's six dice. Yeah, and two of them and are then hunger. two of them are hunger. Okay. Yep. That's a, there we go. So it's better than five dice. Mm -hmm. 
This is Odette. Come on. Ooh, Critical mm. success. I'm gonna burn a willpower. I think you. I think you might. Roll so, so, uh, yeah. Odette came away with the crit. It sounds like. Yeah, so, yeah. she's got the crit. Okay, I'm gonna burn a willpower. <coughs> I forget. Can I re-roll a red? You can't re-roll a red with okay. the willpower. Just the black. Yeah, dice. I figured. Okay, that's One a little more. bit better. What have you got? So I got three. You got three. So keep that in mind. Hold that thought. Odette has six successes on the anchor throw. Yeah. And now let's take Odette care of the other great. boat driver. As the boat is passing you parallel, that's when, of course, when you can get a good look mm -hmm. at who it is. You've never seen who they are. You, you don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. They are not familiar to you at all. Um, you presume they're kindred. Maybe not. It's hard to tell. You get a flash of, of faces and um, uh, clothing, but nothing that is detailed enough to stick in memory because it's happening so fast. So their roll. You got three? Yes. Can't look. A tie. Three. The tie goes to the active vampire. So this is it. You avoid getting swamped mm -hmm. by inches. As they pull close, wave of water comes splashing over the side of your speedboat. You manage to keep your grip on the wheel, keep your boat out of harm's way. At the same time, Odette lets fly the anchor, which sails through the distance across, falls into the, into the uh, wheel well of their boat, latches on to something solid, and... <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching... Kids play crack the whip on roller skates. <laughs> yeah. So everything's going along just fine, and then boom. Yeah. 180 degrees, a terrible noise. Their rear stern lifts out of the water. You can actually see the propellers <laughs> straining for grip in the air, no longer churning water. Their boat flips over, capsizes, yanks Odette with the force of it off your boat <clears throat> and into the water between you. Amanda. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. You've reached the museum again. Yeah. But you pull up short, maybe 20 <clears throat> yards away. The intercom switches on with a click. And a voice from the driver's seat says, Sir, there's gunfire up ahead. What should I do? Anthony says, Wait, hold here. Amanda, roll down your window. <laughs> You're reaching for the handle, but it's not there. It's the strangest contraption. It's powered by a button. Yeah. It's newfangled technology. You're not that old. You're not that old yet. I'm not right? that old, no. Yeah. So rolling down your window. Jerry, you, you had a great window down. sound. Oh sure. That was actually very real. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The first time I was like, wow. Hey, guys, disturb is there a window around? Disturbingly <laughs> accurate. Yeah. Power down the window, and you get a good look. You're about 20 yards away up the street, short of the museum. You can see the Museum of Glass in the distance. Yeah. You can also see the first uncomfortably pink light of pre-dawn sneaking up behind the hills and buildings to the east. And it almost feels like you're getting a sunburn on your face. Mm. No damage yet, but you can feel it. A normal person would feel nothing. It would just be cool night air. But you, <laughs> the undead, you know the enemy when right. you see it. Exfoliation. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, some people spend a lot of money on laser treatments, you know. Yeah, yeah you should feel lucky. <laughs> <laughs> In the street up ahead, though, is pandemonium. Those SUVs that I mentioned that were blocking off the street, the doors are open. You can see figures leaning on the... Uh, on the open doors for balance as they fire. You can see kindred that you met in the Elysium caught in the crossfire. Some of them have weapons too. Some of them are fighting back. Some of them are fleeing. It's a mess. You can also see at the very far end police vehicle lights approaching. Oh, shit. I was like, the fuzz. Um. <laughs> Be cool. <laughs> be cool, be cool, be cool, be cool. Police? Uh, <laughs> yeah, officer here. Yeah, the police. Uh, I see them coming from down the street. Um, it's just a shit show out there. Everyone's firing at each other. It doesn't seem like anyone's getting out. I don't know okay. what to do, because I have my friends in there. I don't know. 
Are your friends still in there? I don't know. I mean, I left. Do you see them? Um, Are they I in use the my street? heightened senses and I take a look. Mm-hmm. See if I can. So you you stare at the firefight. It's like watching a cool action movie <laughs> with your heightened senses. Yeah. Everything is in minute detail. You can actually see the bullets individually whizzing through the air, striking metal, concrete, glass, yeah. flesh. It's amazing. It's almost like watching bullet time. And the sounds are loud in your ear, and you can hear individual kindred voices shouting and giving orders. You can smell the gunpowder, the oil used to polish and clean the weaponry. You can practically taste the gunpowder on the air. Mm -hmm. But you don't see your friends. You see Mr. Drew, all in white, the Toreador who set your feet on this path the previous evening. He's gone down in hail of bullets. His white suit stained dark red. He looks like he's in bad shape. He's not moving. You're not sure if vampires can be killed by bullets, but he looks like he's in terrible shape. I say Um, aloud, I think that white suit is really cursed. (laughs) But don't expect Anthony to understand. It's just you're asking for trouble. I mean, come on, man. Like, just don't wear it. I feel like you didn't plan. Yeah, dude. (laughs) You know, if it was Valentino, perhaps, or Prada, he would be okay. I he would be okay. Completely agree. Um, I'm being snobby. <laughs> <laughs> That's gru. That is literally gruesome. You can see Kennedy, the Tremere. Yeah. Um, he has hunkered down behind a vehicle. Also, uh, it's a motorcycle that somebody has produced from somewhere, and he's using it as a makeshift shield. You know, you didn't remember anybody on a motorcycle. Maybe it belongs to Odette. Who knows? Yeah. Right. Uh, but he is. Casting blood sorcery. Mm, he whoa. is making gestures with his hands and reaching out toward the SUVs nearest you. And as he does so, you can see one of the figures that's shooting stiffen, drop the gun, <gasps> clutch his head, and you can see blood leave his body and flow in a liquid ball through the air to Kennedy's outstretched hand and disappear into his flesh. Kennedy has actually consumed blood at a distance. Uh, I say, uh, looks like Kennedy's gonna be just fine. And then I like move on. The expression on his face though is, is grim. Oh, he's, he must have needed it. He's, he's, yeah. you know, he knows the sun is coming up just as well as you do. Oh, that's true, yeah. The third and final figure that you see is Mr. Kendrick. He's just taking it. He's standing there, returning fire, and talking into his cell phone at the same time. <laughs> Bullets are slamming into him, and he's just he's taking it. He, you can see, you can see the individual Bad slugs ass. slam through his beautifully tailored suit, making uh, awesome holes in the fabric, and he winces and snarls every time he gets hit, but... He's not going down, but he is talking frantically into a phone. Badass. Maybe he can be Prince. Are your yeah. friends there? Do you see them? No, I don't see. I don't see them. I don't see them at all. I, I, I don't have high hopes for these people who are already out there. But I, I don't see my friends. Hold on. He says something in Italian to the driver, and the oh, limo no. lurches forward. Gathering speed. I want to say I, I maybe understood two words out of that because I took one class of Italian. <laughs> pronto, pronto! <laughs> <laughs> quickly, quickly. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, back in the corner. Enough. Yeah. <clears throat> two figures emerge from the dark and they stop short when they see you and Evangeline. Mm-hmm. One of them is small. His face reminds you of a rodent, like a ferret or a rat or a weasel. He's got beady little eyes that sort of take in all the details of your face and attire in a quick moment. He's very observant. Mm-hmm. The other, sort of flat and broad, like a uh, almost like a slab. Okay. Expressionless. He's got a flat top haircut, really bad. Just like a cartoon mobster sort of silhouette. Yeah. It's almost as though someone has called Central Casting and <laughs> yeah. said, "Send me a couple of Goons. send me a couple of mooks." <laughs> <laughs> What do you got in mooks? <laughs> Give me a couple of mooks. Both of them have pistols, but they're pointed at the floor. Okay. 
Uh, the uh, the weasel looking one looks over at Evangeline. He looks at his friend. I step in front of Evangeline. <clears throat> you guys looking for the Starbucks too? They look at each other one more time, <laughs> and then they level their pistols what the at fuck? you. <laughs> I tell you what, just let us go through, be on your way, and nothing happens. I'm not stopping you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was confused. I thought you were stopping me. Are you stopping me from going out? The uh, broad... <laughs> Slab-like individual leans in and says, and almost in a stage whisper, We don't have time for this shit! We got a job! Yeah, I, think, I think we're all in agreement here. Good choice. You're going to love it in there. You never saw us. Yeah. Right? Saw who? I love it when they make good decisions. Yeah. All right. They don't put their guns away, but they walk past. Okay. You can hear their footsteps echoing down the corridor as they go toward the museum. As soon the echoes fade from your hearing, and Sergei reappears. Yeah, I'll do the same thing. I say, friends of friends of yours. Friends no, of no, ours? no. Perhaps they perhaps they are part of the the uh, the incident insiders. Well, they're late. They are, in fact, delayed. I feel, good sir. However, that um. We would be remiss in allowing them to continue. And yet, as we know, dawn approaches. The hour of disaster is nearly upon us, and we do not wish to sleep in a corridor. No, I want you guys, before you get married, to take (laughs) us to somewhere where we can lock a door and lay down in a bed. He, he, He can sense the energy. There's no judgment. I want to come. It I'm is. just saying, right now... Perhaps discretion is, in fact, the better part of that. Uh, well, there's, there's a case to be made, shall we? With mm. haste. <sighs> you are right. Let us go. All right, but uh, I sort of have my hand in my pocket, ready to produce... Uh, a baton at a moment's notice. At a moment's notice. So, uh, you and Sergey follow the pursuers. Is that right? If I got that correct? <coughs> no. Well, here, we want to oh, drop. Oh, you we're we're going to drop them off. Ah, so there, you want to? There should be wanna, a juncture soon. I don't, they, they don't, Wait, so you guys want to follow the people who are going back mm-hmm. to the museum? I, I am doing what my friend has suggested, but I see no reason why we can't place you in care. Why would you? You said that we'd be remiss to let them go. Help me understand that. Well, if they are part of the attacking force... Then we have escaped them. Let's keep going. (laughs) Evangeline nods in sincere (laughs) agreement. Yeah. (laughs) You're not making a great case. But we don't know the situation that we have left behind. Perhaps this is the force that turns the tide. We may be sentencing some of our comrades to death. I didn't know anybody in there. I've never seen these people before in my life. Well, Perhaps your young friend speaks wisdom. What, what I like, what, what I want is the opportunity to split the party fully. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm waiting for. Why, I, I, why I, do you hate me? <laughs> <laughs> what have, like, what have I ever done, have what I ever done to you? <laughs> Listen. This is revenge, isn't it, for the Elysium? Okay. We made it. Let's go. Yeah, yeah I mean, I see, how, how far is it until uh, oh, they uh, may... Uh, perhaps a hundred yards, very quick. Shall we? Let That's us take sandwich. you to safety. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> Let us take you to safety. So they proceed. Meanwhile, back on the water. So, Odette's in the water. The enemy boat has overturned. Its passengers are starting to pop up on either side, clearing the surface of the waterway. You are still in possession and control of your boat. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do? Odette's in the water? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to prop- stop the boat. Yeah. You're going to cut the engine? Yeah. All right, so stop the engine. You should raise a flag. Swimmer in the water. Swimmer in the water. Oh, yeah, that's mm-hmm. a diving thing. Yeah. Right. 
Uh, so you are now just drifting with the tide. Okay. All right. Um, the three individuals who are in the enemy boat are starting to swim. Uh, one of them is clinging to the overturned hull of the vessel. The other two are trying to swim away. Okay. Odette is not swimming very capably. She's sort of dog paddling, yeah. <laughs> you know, towards the overturned boat. Mm -hmm. She's going towards them. Mm -hmm. well, she doesn't know that. She doesn't know what's going on here. Um, we only need one. Yeah, I feel like there's no way those swimmers can get to shore in time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I considered briefly shooting them with the flare gun, which I'm sure is avoid this boat. <laughs> it's just right. It's, it's just uh, right there in the glow box. It's, it's required. <laughs> it's equipment. required. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure there's a flare gun I could pop them in, but I don't know how good my aim is. The U.S. Coast Guard requires that flare guns uh, be aboard all vessels, even little yeah. ones like this. So yeah, there is a flare gun. Okay. It's it's hard not to, isn't it? I'm going. I am going to ready the flare gun very calmly. Okay. You know. So you're going to check it and make sure it's got a flare. They're yep. single shot. Mm -hmm. You know, they're a breakdown. Have it ready, and then um, I'm I'm going to maneuver our vessel towards where their capsized vessel so is. So you're going to start up the engine again and pull it alongside. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. By this time, the other two kindred are have made it maybe a hundred yards away, but they are swimming in different directions. Yeah. One that's of them right. is swimming for the far shore of the waterway, mm -hmm. and the other one is swimming you know, vaguely out to the the bay direction. Okay. They're both trying to swim as fast as they can. Jesus. You too can now begin to feel. Yeah. I'm getting that, nervous. That prickling sensation on your face mm -hmm. and your neck. St. Ives apricot scrub. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, dawn is not far. <clears throat> you got to get off this water soon. Yeah. Or you're all going to fry. Pulling up as close as I can. Um, you can get right up alongside the yeah. hull. Yeah. So the bedraggled, waterlogged kindred that was in the other boat is now <sighs> across the hull. And you can get a, a fairly good look at the guy. Yeah. Um, he's thin. He's athletic. He's wearing uh, what looks like just jeans and a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. He's got a, a cool tribal tattoo up his left arm, though. Okay. Yeah, it's really awesome. He got a wristwatch that'll probably never work again. Yeah. I help Odette. His, his the long boat blonde yeah. hair is, is is in his eyes. You can't really see. He's trying to clear his vision. Yeah. Odette, you want to help her into your yes, boat? Yes. Yes. I'm gonna reach her hand. Did you first. see that? Did you see me? <laughs> I am aim, awesome. My dear. That was the force with which you threw that sent shivers up my spine. Mm -hmm. See? And that, I reach out to her. <laughs> no more dog jokes. No. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, Never her, again. her long red hair is just soaking wet yeah. around her face. She looks a little cadaverous mm -hmm. with the pale skin and the, and the hair clinging to her features. Her leather jacket is probably ruined, yeah. but you know, she doesn't care. All right. Where, where is everybody? Oh, shit. One of them is floundering off in the middle of the water. The other one's headed towards the coast, but we only, we only really need one. Okay, you get him. She pull, no, reaches that, into her waistband. Odette, it's almost ah, done. I think my pistol's no, fucked. No, stop. <laughs> we just need one for questioning. It's almost done. She looks at the skyline. Holy shit. It's probably not wise to yeah, chase let's those get, idiots. You're right. Let's get this Let's, let's get, get this guy. one in. Who is... Do, hey! Asshole! We're gonna let you on the boat. He looks up. He's kind of like a sheepdog with the long blonde hair in front of his eyes. He's kind of like a curtain. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. How did you do? What did you do? Get in the boat. He's kind of crab walking around the hole, trying not to fall in the water again. I'm not giving him a hint. Getting, getting his legs underneath him, getting ready to jump in your boat. Yeah, okay. He jumps over. Do you give him a hand, or do you just let no. him do it? No, well, he's yucky. And then, as he jumps, as he's jumping in, I thrust the little flare gun into Odette's hand since her pistol is not in working order, and say, <laughs> "Just in case he tries anything." Ooh, wow! He barely makes it. Okay. Uh, he almost goes backward into the drink again, <laughs> and he unbalances your your boat too at the same time, and you're rocking I'm back my and head forth. The whole time. No, it's rude. He has oh, no sea legs of any kind. Oh, Odette keeps. The flare gun trained at point blank. It might actually blow up your boat too, but yeah, you know, you're it's not sure. fine. Yeah. Uh, it's just there for intimidation. Yeah, he lands awkwardly in your boat at your feet and looks up. 
How do you want to do this? I very, I like stand very pointedly and I'm like, I will have words with you in a moment, but for now, we yeah. need to find shelter. Yeah, he yeah. Do not think you are a guest. You are very much a prisoner. And if you so much as try anything in my presence, well, let's just say your shaggy hair will be very elegantly removed from the rest of your body. Assuming I don't burn it away first as she jams the barrel of the flare gun right behind his ear. God. Say the word, he fries. Let's get this thing in the shore. Dude, it's These so fiery it's redheads. So good. And it's I so get back brain. behind the wheel and um, what is around us? <clears throat> so you're out in the middle of the waterway. On the far side, that's the tide flats. The, <laughs> actually, the, if you go far enough, far enough in that direction, you'll find yourself right back at the comet again. So rail yards, warehouses, um, box cars, mm -hmm. that's trains, perfect. a lot of places to hide from the sun. Good. Very convenient. Yeah. Let's let's head in that direction. Okay. You are going to maneuver the boat to the far side and head for a convenient landing spot, mm -hmm. and then find shelter. Yeah, your prisoner. probably like a storage container, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I'll probably using Odette's help, like tie him up very well, and try to just sleep there for the night. Hold that thought. Pronto, pronto. <laughs> <laughs> There's a horrific shock that travels the length of the limousine. You think for a moment, it's going to go over. But this gigantic, heavy vehicle, moving low and fast, yeah. stays stable. You are thrown around the interior. You hear the sound of rending metal, screeching tires. And you just know, you just know that you slam through two of those SUVs. Just use this thing as a battery Jesus, ram. Yeah. I'm very comfortable as I'm being thrown around this vehicle because it's very oh, elegant. Posh. Yeah. posh and elegant. Hear the sound of bullets striking yeah. the outside. Bullets hitting the glass that does not break. Bulletproof. I'm, I'm on the floor of the vehicle at this point. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm just like trying to hold on to it. <laughs> Hang on! Stay down! Stay down! <laughs> Anthony, Anthony opens one of the doors on his side of the vehicle. And he shouts, get in! Get in! Bullets start slamming through the open doorway. Let's uh, make sure that everybody is safe, right? You have you have almost complete cover down yeah, there. Yeah, I'm like on the floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're like in the little dip. Like, yes, exactly. This is, this roll is this roll is almost impossible. Oh yeah, uh, bullets slam into the upholstery, into the ceiling, into the bulletproof glass, but they don't strike you. Time compresses a little bit. It happens quickly, but it feels like it takes forever. Right. Kennedy is the first one into the limo. Climbing past Anthony Giovanni, throw him himself into his seat. The next one is Mr. Drew. Mm. But he isn't oh. moving under his own power. No. He's thrown. He's thrown in. Into the vehicle. By Just Kendrick. His body. Okay. So his bloodied body is tossed right on top of you. Oh, okay. I'm like, try, I push him off if I can. Yeah. Gross. Now you've got kindred bite. Hey. Mm. Hey, tasty. <laughs> you know what? Not it's not so bad, right? Not bad. And then finally, Kendrick, still talking on his cell phone, God, piles in as man. well. I love him. Uh, the door closes, and uh, Anthony shouts at the driver again. Kennedy sort of rolls over in the seat to face you. Miss Booker. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Not exactly how I planned to meet you again. No, no, no. Me either. Me either, friend. Uh, are you are you all right? I'm I'm um better than Mr. Andrew here or Mr. Drew here, but um not so great. I seem to have lost my glasses, so forgive me if I'm a little Oh, no. Uh, out of no it. Trouble. The limousine is moving again and picking up speed. Bullets continue to slam into the metal skin of its exterior as you go. Meanwhile, in the quarter, mm -hmm. Sergey has led you to a uh, doorway that he unlocks with a set of keys. 
from his pocket and shows you into a comfortable, if a little, uh, excuse me, an uncomfortable cell-like room. There is a cot, as one might find in a prison cell. Mm -hmm. There are some uh, bare shelves. There are a couple of empty cardboard boxes that held who knows what. And that's it. It'll Evangeline do. puts her hands on her <laughs> hips and says, really? Uh, Here? You couldn't, you couldn't. A plant. Anything? <laughs> nothing. Give me the plastic plant. A painting. Nothing at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, at this point we can't make it to my place, so we might as well. Give us the keys. Yeah, Tom wants the key too. He doesn't want to leave the key outside the room. As a gesture of trust and good faith in deference to my most excellent comrade in arms, you shall have both keys, Mr. Hollandaise. Thanks. He separates the two keys from his key rings and hands them to you. So, uh, yeah, I, I tell Evangeline, you can have the cot, and I sort of take my Crocs off, and I make a little pillow, and I, I curl up in the corner like a dog. Like a this dog. This is not your yeah. first time doing this, no. it seems. Yeah. No, he's there, just put the Crocs on one on top of the other. It's just so soft, and then he's just... <laughs> so soft! <laughs> Shall we see what can Something be seen? <clears throat> uh, while not being seen ourselves, sir. Precisely. Nerds! <laughs> <laughs> Let so, us be about it. Indeed, yeah. So we, uh, we head straight out. I have uh, my baton, of course, uh, and my trusty pistol. And your pistol. Mm -hmm. As you're falling asleep, you can hear Evangeline's voice. I don't, I don't know how any of this got started, Tom, but I'm really grateful. Thank you. Uh, I, I, Tom? <laughs> Tom? <laughs> she sighs. <laughs> and she lets the day sleep take her. Nice. In the quarter, however. Indeed. Dark think, works. Well. This has been the most momentous and eventful evening that I can remember in some time. How fortunate that you were here to witness it. Is it, is it so do you have some, what is your precise concern with this uh, rodentine fellow um, <laughs> and the massive rectangle he has accompanied himself with? My fear is that um, things have gone terribly bad back at the museum. I presumed that when we made our exit, my associates would do likewise. <laughs> But yes. if they are pinned down, if they are trapped, then this small but ungainly force might be enough to turn the tide against them. Hmm. So, it behooves us to at least see what can be seen, even if we are in no position to stop it. That I, I agree wholeheartedly with this assertion. Mm. I do not advocate at this time that we should intervene. Oh. Absolutely not. There are, there are but two of us. Indeed, and I fear that uh, it pains me to admit it, Mr. Keene, but I am no skilled combatant. No. It is true. <laughs> though, though I may look otherwise, it is true. I, I get into a pugilist stance and give him a couple eyes. I, I don't know. Oh, oh, you flatter me, sir. You flatter me. <laughs> but I regret it has not been... <clears throat> Among my personal pursuits. Then let us use those skills with which we are world class. Mm. He uh, perhaps instinctively passes a hand over in front of his face, and in a moment it's not Sergei at all. Uh, it's a janitorial type person wearing coveralls and a stained undershirt and work boots. Perfect. Uh, I will uh, accompany him. Uh, likewise, but in mm -hmm. more of an electrician's uh, mm -hmm. garb. Maintenance worker. Mm -hmm. So, thus disguised, you pursue your quarry. It's not difficult to nope. catch up to them. They're not moving that fast. In fact, they seem to have slowed down. <laughs> and they are talking together. Lethargy. The little rat-like fellow mm -hmm. saying, you know, I said this was a bad idea from the beginning. This was just... So this is a waste of time. Now we're just going to piss everybody off and start a war. Mr. Slab replies, I thought that was the point. 
Nobody asked you. <laughs> Just shut up. So he's, he's got his own little soliloquy that's constantly being interrupted <laughs> by the shape. can imagine, you know, in his <laughs> mind, the world is very different. Yeah. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps more uh, black and white. A little bit more um, <clears throat> obvious, yeah, I yeah. think so. Um, they carry on, and then there's the sound, the distinct sound of a cell phone ringing. Mr. Rat stops, pulls the phone out of his pocket. Yeah. Ah, shit. Seriously? <sighs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 we got it. Fuck. It's almost morning. Shit. Turns to slab. We gotta go. It's all gone. Belly up. We gotta get out of here. They turn around and start walking very quickly towards you. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I mean, here in this context, is there a possibility to simply shrink very far up against the walls? Probably not possible to avoid <clears throat> being seen completely unless you employ uh, oh, an obfuscation power. I have every intention of doing so. Ah. I think I've been remiss in, uh, let me double check. I think I should have asked you for a rest And, and I have uh, understood this mm-hmm. and not mentioned it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. What were you doing? Well, you, and, you and Sergei both Cheater. need to make a rouse check. Oh. I, I uh, have neglected to exact the toll. The toll. Ah, the Sergei succeeds. The toll of Oh, when you try to hide in the when shadows. You try, when you try to do the crazy shit. The, crazy mm-hmm. shit. You the mask hide. of a thousand faces. The, um... Wow. Oh, yeah. So you are an electrician. Yeah. You are an electrician. For if, if you need help. I mean, obviously, you know, um, you know, my business really grows on these personal recommendations. Right. So let your family know. Let your yeah. friends know. Mm-hmm. Um, there are enough shadows here <clears throat> that you could use the first dot power cloak of shadows. And as mm-hmm. long as you do not move or speak, you can't be seen. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, do it as cheaply as possible. Okay. Not wanting to risk uh, further rousing the beast. Mm-mm. Okay, that is then what you do. You and Sergey go to opposite sides of the corridor, meld into the shadows, and let them pass you by, Mr. Rat still complaining all the way. See, see, bad idea. They never listen to me. It's always the same. Nothing ever goes right. I always tell them. And this goes on and on. No, exactly. we, need, we need as much as we can. I mean, honestly, I'm wondering how far, I'm wondering if we can get any morsels with a little more follow. Do you want to give it a try? Yeah. If we can just get um, one more morsel, it'll make it completely worthwhile. Let's go with dexterity and stealth. I have that. Yeah. We'll roll for Sergey. Oh, yeah. He's pretty good at it. Phi, die. Two of them are hungry, right? No. Oh, no, no. Oh, oh, None of them. Right. Jameson continues to be sated. <clears throat> hey, no, every, time I do, every time I do a rouse check, I can heal a point of superficial damage, right? Yes. Can I do that retroactively? You can do it retroactively if you want to. Please. I'm going to do exactly that. Thing. Risks your hunger, though. Never right? mind. For each, for, no, for each wound, you would wrong. risk a hunger. Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I've seen zero. <laughs> uh, one. The power of will. Power of will grants you a reroll on three dice. William. Will I am. Hey, there you go. There's three. Very good. That's excellent. Sergey also has three. And we will roll once to see if they overhear you. Our subterranean Um, buddy cop film continues apace. Hey. Dapper gents. See you. There for a minute, I thought you guys were just going to talk and not get anything done. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> no, keep talking about how you you are capable, but yeah, never exactly. do anything. I know, you've made Odetti, but what are you, <coughs> Sergison? We don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sergison? <laughs> Sergison is pretty good. So, <laughs> Sergison. Jim Mi- Bergay. Mr. Rat is... <laughs> Mr. Rat is too preoccupied with his litany of complaints oh, to notice you. Oh, and just the you. weight just pressing uh, down on him from all sides. Uh, to hear him speak, he is the only competent kindred in the Northwest, and everyone else <laughs> is a fool, and he is a long suffering victim of their incompetence. Uh, it's just, it's just it's good night, it's going to get better and better, and now we got to go sleep in a dumpster or whatever. Who knows? God, we never should have let him talk to us into this, but whatever. Uh, you know what? It's not our fault. They woke up Gravenstein, and that sped everything up. The whole timetable went to hell. So I don't know who those fucks were, but you know, 
That dude with the tattoos was one of them. Holiday or something. Doc Holiday. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't listen that much I didn't well to the briefing. But uh, yeah, him and, his, him and his buddies, I guess, got sent on some suicide mission and lived through it. And now we got Gravenstein back in the picture again. Fuck that shit. Just blows. Hmm. This is the worst night ever. I, saw, I would love it if, like, if the shape were actually like a, a profound intellect. And then he just endures the rat the rest of the time. I like it. He's got real plans. Yeah. <laughs> Slab doesn't have a lot to say about no, this. No, Mr. No. Slab nods sympathetically, no, makes sympathetic probably. noises. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, is it safe to presume that you don't interfere with them? You no. let them proceed? No, we, 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 let, them, we let them emerge um, and escape. And it may be that they, I mean... Do they find another one of these locked rooms underground and stay there? They appear, to be, they intent, they appear to be intent on leaving the tunnels. Yeah, because you're talking about like a dumpster. Mm-hmm. I mean, their plan clearly involves leaving the they, tunnels. They may not even be aware that there's a safe place to sleep down here. I, that's, yeah. that's the news I want to hear. Okay. Um, so uh, at, a cer- at a certain point, uh, they're going to make their they're going to make their way up and out, and then we'll need to find uh, a place to sleep down here. They're as close to uh, Mr. Hollandaise as possible. Sergey knows just the place. I have prepared several individual resting places mm. of a non-permanent nature. Of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, some are a little better appointed than others. <laughs> I, I confess I could not resist the temptation to show your friends into, shall we say, substandard accommodation. Well, I, I, if, if there's a, a loyalty program um, I would love to be inducted. I am not considered this. Build stars, <laughs> perhaps. Punch card, maybe? I, just, I don't know. Mm. Consider it. Consider it. Mm, interesting. An all new enterprise. We do have time. We have nothing but. So he does lead you to uh, a very different room, much more comfortable. I breathe a sigh of Secured relief. with a stout metal door. Mm. It actually has two individual sleeping rooms. You both have a little bit of privacy mm. with real beds and you not just privacy. iron cots. Yes. Oh, there is no sustenance here, but you are not in need. Indeed. And neither is he, apparently. I or at least he's great. willing to put up with it. I feel great. Yeah. As the day sleep comes over you, you feel reasonably secure. It's not like being at home. No, course. no, no, no. So at that point, you might check your messages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, 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 this, I mean... If I get some signal down here, I mean, I have an electrician after all. Yeah, maybe get a bar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll go I'll just as I as I uh, lay down. Um, I'll just pull oh, it out. Real quick. Check the home screen. You know what I mean? <laughs> Check like, the home screen. Yeah. Check the Slack. Yeah, right? I'm gonna go in there. I'm just gonna. Yeah. yeah. So that's where you would see Amanda's message. Yeah, it's yeah. uh, it's uh, I'm at the hospital. Uh, and then it's um, <laughs> you're gonna re- recreate it. Yeah, yeah. It's like I'm at the hospital. Oh my God, Anthony has a limousine and he picked me up. <laughs> Did you know he owns the hospital? <laughs> it's a, uh, fuck. Okay, so we picked up Mr. Andrew, or Mr. Drew, Kennedy, and Mr. Kendrick, and um, they're pretty shot up, and there's this gunfight happening outside, uh, but we seem all okay, except for Mr. Drew. I think that suit is cursed. And then I'll leave it on that. <laughs> Right. Uh, uh, as I see That's that, the series of messages that greets you as you're going to sleep when the sun is coming up. But, but once I know, once I've seen the full arc, then and only then can I relax. Yeah. Ah. I got the last episode. Ah. She's, okay. she, she's, she's probably okay. Yeah. She but seems fine. It's too late now yeah. to do anything about it, unfortunately. Out of the water. So, tied the boat up to a convenient dock on the far side mm-hmm. of the waterway. With your prisoner, mm-hmm. flare gun jammed to his ear. My savagery probably surprises even Odette. Like as we're walking past <laughs> a Shit. crate, you just see Betty very skillfully smash it, grab a stake, and just drive it through the back of him while he's walking in front. Holy, Holy shit! shit. Yeah. Holy she sh- smashes a wooden packing crate, yeah. reaches into the debris, mm-hmm. rips out a jagged piece of wood, and just. Shoves it through him. I don't want any trouble when I wake up. Just put this motherfucker on pause. Yes. 
I'm going to I'm going to rule that this is a surprise attack that he cannot okay. defend against since you are attacking from behind. Mm -hmm. I would be surprised. And he has no you know, no way to know that it is coming. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to let the action succeed. Oh, okay. Without requiring a roll for the for the staking. Normally, if you're staking a kindred that's aware of what's coming, yeah. it's a it's a pretty difficult challenge. Mm -hmm. But he's got no clue. You have all the time in the world as he is being frog marched <laughs> with the gun behind his ear by mm -hmm. Odette. Ahead, you've got all the time in the world to figure out where you want to put that stake, and all the time in the world to aim it and mm -hmm. pound it through. The only thing I want to check is um, when you do this, and his body <laughs> collapses onto the ground. What do you do with him? Um, have Odette grab one arm, have me grab the other, and look for like a storage container. Or that something. was. Badass Betty. I'm going to call you Badass Betty from now on. <laughs> yeah. Badass Bellevue Betty. So it's oh a weak. Does Betty, does Betty like blush? I'm just impressed. Like, I'm on her. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't want us to have us girls to have any issues in the morning. You should be a hound. You got to meet, you got to meet Volkov. Really? He'll want you on the payroll for sure. Do you sure. think I have that kind of potential? You know you do. Oh. Don't be modest. Let's get this guy going. We have to sleep in a dump tonight, but I'm happy at least to have you to help keep me warm, Odette, as I, like, drag the <laughs> like, kindred along. Aww. Aww. <laughs> so you drag the state kindred along with you. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned a shipping container. Yeah. Uh, given your smuggling background, it's mm -hmm. pretty easy for you to figure out where you might find an empty or even half-full container out here on the waterfront docks. And you ob obviously know how to get into one. Yeah. So getting in hiding among whatever packing materials and cargo is in there and settling down as the sun rises above the horizon, sink into the day sleep, you and Odette on either side of your staked prisoner. Mm -hmm. It's very cozy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this seems like an oh. excellent place to pause our vampire story for now. I, I think so too, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I should that's, packed. That's what we'll do. Yeah. <laughs>